oddities are the absolute best. I mean, those animals that confuse people, which allows me to go on a mini tirade about them and how they're likely threatened with extinction. Our animal today is the antithesis of this phenomenon. Until today. On today's episode of Endangered Inhabitants, we'll be lazily climbing into the world of Arctictus binturong. The binturong. Like some other species covered in this series, bearcats are found in the mammalian order Carnivora. This order can be divided into two suborders, the Caniformia containing the dog-like carnivores, and the Filiformia containing the cat-like carnivores, which our binturong falls under. Filiformia can then be divided into seven families, the Nandindidae containing the African palm civet, the Philidae containing the cats, the Prionodontidae containing the linsangs, the Eopluridae containing the Malagasy carnivores, the Herpestidae containing the mongooses, the Hyenidae containing the hyenas, and the Viveridae containing the Viverids, which our guy falls under. The family Viveridae is highly diverse and found throughout the Old World. Compared to the rest of Filiformia, their flesh-shearing carnassial teeth are relatively underdeveloped, highlighting their more omnivorous diet. There are four subfamilies within Viveridae, the Paranoxinae, the Hemigallinae, the Viverinae, and the Geneninae. The Binturongs fall into the subfamily Paradoxirinae under the genus Arctictus. Binturongs can be further divided into nine subspecies into two clades, with the northern clade in mainland Asia being separated from the Sundaic clade by the Isthmus of Kra. The recognized subspecies include the Vietnamese binturong, the Malayan binturong, the Siamese binturong, the East Sumatran binturong, the Chinese binturong, the North Sumatran binturong, two species referred to as the Bornean binturong, and the Palawan binturong. The name Binturong comes from their common name related to the West Malayo-Polynesian root Maturong, which the animal has been referred to for millennia by the natives. Another common name Binturongs are commonly referred to as is the Bearcat, which is a misnomer, a wrong or inaccurate name or designation, as these animals are neither bear nor cat, as previously explained. Binturongs are the largest of the Viverids. They are slightly sexually dimorphic, with females being 20% heavier on average, slay queen. Wild individuals average 71 to 84 centimeters or 28 to 33 inches in length and weigh anywhere between 10 to 15 kilograms or 20 to 33 pounds. It should be noted that captive individuals tend to grow larger than their wild counterparts. Binturongs can live about 16 to 18 years in the wild, but can live up to 25 years in captivity. These animals are long and heavy, with short, stout legs. Their bodies are low and stocky. Said short, stout legs sport five-toed feet with large claws used for climbing. The feet themselves are plantigrade, meaning that they are applied to the ground throughout the whole length, which ours are as well, with the hind feet being longer than the forefeet. They tend to amble, much like a bear, when waddling on the ground. One of their most important features is their bushy, prehensile tail that gradually tapers and curls inward at the tip. That tail is extremely muscular and is nearly as long as the head and body combined. They can use it like a fifth limb, with it even sporting a patch of leathery skin that provides extra traction. It is both the biggest and strongest prehensile tail of any animal. Their body is covered in a thick coat of coarse black fur that is often tipped in gray, buff, yellow, or a cream color. They also have long, thick, white whiskers that can grow up to 20 centimeters or 8 inches long. These specialized hairs, also known as vibrissae, help mammals sense their environment, but can also be used as a form of nonverbal communication and be used to protect sensitive organs like the eyes. Binturongs are found in Asia. These fluffy fellows occur in India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, Thailand, both mainland and insular Malaysia, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, the province of Yunnan in China, the islands of Sumatra, Borneo, and Java in Indonesia, and the island of Palawan in the Philippines. As arboreal animals, binturongs are mostly confined to tropical forests. These include lowland montane and swamp forests, all with high levels of moisture. It is extremely rare, but not unheard of, 
for them to occur in areas of higher disturbance, like mosaic open forest landscapes interspersed with agriculture and non-native forest plantations. They cannot, however, live within the blocks of monoculture plantations such as palm oil and rubber that are common throughout Southeast Asia. Binturongs are omnivorous, eating fruits, small mammals, birds, and insects. Since binturongs don't exactly have the attributes to make them apex predators, most of the prey they catch is opportunistic when binturongs simply come across prey items and happen to catch them. They mostly feed on plant matter, with fruit making up a large portion of their diet. The most important of which are figs of the genus Ficus. Regarding their chompers, Binturongs have between 36 to 40 teeth. Their teeth are small, with well-separated incisors and reduced shearing blades on the carnassials, which may lead to poorly processed food. This, combined with their short gastrointestinal tract compared to most herbivores, result in inefficient digestion of plant material. All these factors combine to create the perfect seed disperser. As fruit are ripened ovaries of the flower that contains seeds, they have evolutionarily made themselves appetizing so animals, like our binturong, will eat them. These seed dispersers will then travel to different areas of the forest and defecate the seeds out, allowing for the propagation along with a yummy treat for the propagator. Binturongs are actually the only wild animal able to disperse the seeds of the strangler fig, as a special enzyme in their stomach helps break down the outer shell, making it easier for the seeds to germinate after being discharged and meeting conditions well suited for the tree to grow. Binturongs are primarily nocturnal, but could be considered cothermal as they can be active during both day and night. It really depends on the individual. While they do sleep, they like to lay in high tree branches while curling their tails around a limb to keep their grip. They will also bask in the sun, enjoying some rays and getting some nice warmth. Binturongs are usually solitary animals. To communicate, binturongs have scent glands near their tails that they use to mark their territory. The smell produced is similar to that of buttered popcorn. This is thanks to the volatile compound 2-actyl-1-pyrroline found in the glands which is also produced in the Maillard reaction, which is where amino acids and reducing sugars react to create melanodins, the compounds that give brown foods their distinctive flavor and aroma. Little research has been done regarding the mating systems of wild binturongs, but recent studies indicate that a monogamous system is most likely. Receptive female binturongs in estrus, ready for the nasty, will communicate with other binturongs in the vicinity, most likely the male of a mated pair if they are monogamous, find a mate through scent marking and vocalizations. Once the nasty is completed, gestation lasts around 90 days. The typical litter size is around 2, but can be up to 6. The young remain hidden in the mother's fur for the first few days and are weaned at about six to eight weeks, spending most of their time clinging to their mother. The mother will provide care until the young are independent and sometimes continue to live with the offspring after they become independent. As binturongs are relatively large carnivorans, they have very few animals that can kill healthy adults. Known predators binturongs face include tigers and doles wherever they're sympatric, mostly when binturongs have to come down to the forest floor to move from tree to tree. Binturongs are listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. The exact number of mature individuals is unknown, but the population trend is decreasing. The biggest threat that binturongs face is habitat loss, degradation, and fragmentation. Depending on the part of their range, threats can come in the form of logging and conversion of forests to non-forest land uses. Even protected areas aren't exempt from rampant deforestation and opportunistic logging, as weak enforcement and lenient penalties make these crimes quite lucrative in the countries the Binturong calls home. Hunting is also prevalent. Binturongs are hunted for their meat, skins, for traditional medicines, and to sell into the exotic pet trade. Binturongs are among the most frequently displayed caged live carnivorans, and their skins are often traded. They're considered a delicacy in parts of Southeast Asia, where they are often taken for food and even traded as a food item. This can combine with habitat fragmentation that makes binturongs easier for poachers to find. 
Recent evidence found that binturongs are descending to the ground more than previously thought. This increases the likelihood of these animals getting caught in poacher snares and other traps, now being greater than previously thought. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. I'm back from Florida, and already have a few videos written out, as the grind never stops even on vacation. All of them just need to be voiced and edited. Writing can be hard for someone as inept as I am, but we're trying to make up for lost time as December will be the month of content. My goal will be to hit 100 subscribers before the end of the year to not game-end myself. Everyone have a solid day. Peace.